Are we living in a simulation? That is a question that might sound ridiculous to some that have never heard of this before. However, it might not be as far-fetched as some might think. Back in June 2016, billionaire inventor and businessman Elon Musk, who is better known for being the founder of Tesla Motors and SpaceX, made headlines by proposing just that. When asked about this theory, he had this to say about it. The, the strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Um, that that 40, called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtu you know, virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. E even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, um, then you just say, okay, well, well let's imagine it's 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. We're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be you know, billions of such uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes. It would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. Some even propose that we might be living inside a simulation of a simulation. However, others might make the argument that while Elon Musk is certainly an intelligent individual with great vision, that does not make any of his statements a reality and there is no evidence that this might be the case. However, that might not be completely true. Highly respected theoretical physicist Dr. Sylvester James Gates Jr has dedicated the past 15 years of his life in search of the holy grail of physics, a unifying theory or a theory of everything that would unify Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity and quantum field theory. If you would like to know more about this, I have linked an amazing and entertaining funny video that goes in depth about this subject from one of my favorite YouTubers, link in the description. I highly recommend that you check it out. But I digress, according to Gates, he has made an amazing discovery they might just confirm that we are indeed living inside of a simulation. I will play a small clip as he explains his findings while having a discussion with celebrity physicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. So, so where, where, where has this pursuit taken you? Well, partly it's taken to these very strange images that are behind your head right now. <laughs> these are pictures of equations. I've been, for the last 15 years, trying to answer the kinds of questions that my colleagues here have been raising. And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. <laughs> are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. Computer code. Computer code. Strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code. You're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code. It's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. That's what we find very, very deeply inside the equations that occur in string theory and in general in systems that we say are supersymmetric. Essentially, if he is correct, me, you, and everything in this universe is just computer code. Suddenly, Elon's statements don't seem so far-fetched. Let's play devil's advocate and assume we are indeed inside of a computer simulation. If so, does that mean we ourselves are already taking the first steps to creating such a simulation inside of our own reality? For that, we would need a combination of technologies that are still in their primitive stages in our current reality. Technologies such as virtual reality and an extremely powerful computer one day would be able to simulate the whole universe as we know it today. 
but is the creation of such a computer even possible? While perhaps such a computer might not be as far off as we might think, and we might already be seeing the first stages of such a computer in D-Wave's quantum computers. D-Wave's co-founder, Jordi Rose, has made some extraordinary claims such as stating that their quantum computers will soon be able to pull resources from multiple parallel universes to solve highly complex problems, which might sound more like science fiction than reality and would be easily ignored if it wasn't for the huge companies already backing D-Wave, claiming they're already seeing promising results. Companies such as Google, NASA, Lockheed Martin, and Los Alamos National Laboratory. These companies have all invested millions into D-Wave's quantum computers. However, if Rose is correct and these quantum computers are indeed able to pull resources from parallel universes, what else will they be able to pull in? And what if any side effects might this create? Many conspiracy theorists claim that the operation of these computers might already be having negative side effects, such as small changes in our reality, aka the Mandela Effect. However, critics are quick to point out the fact that these computers barely qualify as quantum computers in the first place. Which is indeed partially true, as D-Wave computers are what is known as a quantum annealer computer, which is very restricted to solving very specific optimization problems. However, this might be an important first step. The next step would be to create an analog quantum computer, which according to many experts might be just a couple of years away. An analog quantum computer has much more applications and much higher computing power. It might eventually lead to the holy grail of quantum computing as we know it, a universal quantum computer. This computer will theoretically have unimaginable computing power and a virtual infinite amount of applications, one of which, to return to our original point, might be powerful enough to run a simulation as the one we might be living in right now. And if for reality it's indeed currently running on a quantum computer, it raises many questions, such as are we already the creators of such a quantum computer? And is this simulation one of our own creation? Or are we just avatars in a simulation being ran by an unknown creator? And are such things as the Mandela effect just part of the programming or part of the nature of the quantum computer itself? So many deep questions that just boggle the mind to even try to think about them. However, we might have some answers in our lifetime depending on how fast quantum computing technology progresses and the research into better understanding these highly complex machines and the physics at play. And with that, I leave you guys with the question, how likely is it that we're living in a simulation? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to check out our other content and like and subscribe if you already haven't done so. I would really appreciate that. And I will catch you guys in the next one.